here joined by Liam Williams. Hey. We're going to bring you the top eight of the Oregon State Championship. Should be a pretty spicy one. We've got David Cohen, 2011 world champion, versus Kyle Andrews. David is playing the Manectric Black Kirami X list, while Kyle is on a pretty basic Seismitoad Slurpuff list. He plays three Headringer. He does play Headringer. He Headringer Tyler and Amora a lot in the and round. scoop up Cyclone. Yes, he does. He those cards are both used very effectively versus Tyler. And you said that you had played both of these. I played against Cohen's list and Kyle Andrews and Swiss. Who 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 would you give the immediate advantage to? Um, I think that um, if Kyle can get some early Headringers down, it's really tough for Cohen because he needs three energy. On the Mega Matrix, and he doesn't play double colorless energy. But uh, I think that if Cohen can dodge a turn one quaking punch, he's in good shape. Reasonable. I've heard, I've heard that it all depends on how fast you can get your Mega down, protected with tools, especially if you can get a Spirit Link mm -hmm. um, before the first quaking punch. Cohen also plays uh, two Keldeos and multiple Float Stones, so he can kind of fade lasers. Definitely. As long as he can get the stones yeah. down before Quaking Punch. Kyle is playing two Zerosic, though, so he can get those stones off. Yes. We, uh, as far as I understand from talking to David and Ethan uh, Batson, who also played the list, as well as Chase Maloney and Trevor Reed, who played it to top four finish or top eight finishers at Washington States, uh, I do believe that the matchup is good. They seem to think it's around 60-40, but it's, they said it's heavily dependent on how fast you can get the links on. That seems like it would matter a lot. Looks like Kyle is going first and playing an N. Yeah, he looks like he's stellar guidance for the N. So there's no Toad down yet and no Double Colorless down yet. So he might be in poor shape, but it's pretty easy to get a Slurp Slurp off out of the way. I don't think I've seen a Toad player miss a Toad DCE the entire time I've been streaming. Well, <laughs> oh, there's a Toad. There there's we go. One piece of the puzzle. Acrobat. I'd like to see a float stone here. Hmm. Second Swirlix. Acrobike again. So. Couldn't quite see what he grabbed there. And just passes the turn, so he has the toad, but no double colorless, no muscle band, and no energy drops whatsoever. Here's an ultra bond of David, and if for those of you who are inexperienced with the format, basically David is going to play as many items as possible uh, during the turn or turns, hopefully, that he is not under item lock. Cohen uh, just discarded a spirit link. Uh, he, I have more to, in hand. I have to believe he has another one. He was just telling me probably 10 minutes ago how important it was to get the spirit link down. Um, he might be going for a Jirachi here. Uh, that's possible too. Or In which case, if he's Junipering. Yeah, yeah like it, it's possible he's going for a Jirachi. But now he's going for the Ministry. It looks like he's going to take a look through his deck and make sure make sure that's the correct play. But um, So he's going to try and use all the items he can before he gets under item lock. Because really, unless something goes wrong for the Toad player, once they have Quaking Punch, they don't need to stop. And if they do stop, you're you're probably winning anyways and so he can reasonably expect not to play items for the rest of the game yeah this is spirit link now i just want to see a lightning energy well i think that spirit stream out of the way might be kind of hard too if he doesn't get keldeo floats down this turn because then he can't play any switch cards after quick and punch lock happens that's true he's gonna go ahead and compressor getting rid of a lightning and a water I see a Juniper in his hand, discarding a Lysander. Kyle does play multiple Zerosic though, so these Spirit Links aren't necessarily safe. They're just probably safe. It also is just dependent on, like, for instance here, if Cohen can get the Mega Manectric next turn, he's probably safe because with Kyle not having a DCE, he's probably going to want to play a card advantage supporter. Yeah. Such as a Juniper or an N. Oh. <laughs> Cohen tried to computer search, but was blocked by his own spirit. Need to be reminded. Tasting for two. A float stone would be really good here. A well, float, float stone DC is exactly what the doctor ordered, but 
We'll see what ends up happening. There's a Verbank City gym. That'll let uh, double colorless energy, muscle band, hypnotoxic laser knock out the spirit tomb. But I don't know how far he wants to commit for a one prize inconsequential no honey X. I mean, the thing is, is I think you playing those cards is fine. Though. Like that's how you win inside as much you know. Like assuming he let's say he junipers and draws those cards, I don't think he's not going to play them. Yeah. Like you can always get them back with Lysander's trump card anyway, and I think this is a deck where you just play out your entire hand. Cohen's also playing uh, the Plasma Curum, so. Getting rid of the Spirit Tomb now might make it a lot harder for him to play a 7 prize game. And there's an N from Kyle. So he still needs to draw a DCE as well as a Float Stone. And he whiffed it the first time around, so... Kyle also plays Super Scoop Ups, so he could flip heads. That's true. Probably not as good, but reasonable. Certainly not as good, but... I guess it would, I mean, it would let him reset the Swirl Slurpuff, though. Yeah, he could just evolve that one on the bench. Yeah, just tasting again. So it actually wouldn't be the worst. All right. Looks like a laser in Kyle's hand. Yeah, I saw a muscle band as well. There's an hand, a crushing hammer. Oh, that's that big. Going to be pretty big there. I still think David's main focus is just evolving to the Mega Manectric, and I think it's fine if he can evolve to the Mega and then attach and attach next turn. So it's really going to come down to, as long as David has a reasonable amount of energy, reasonable draw coming, it's going to come down to those Crushing Hammer flips and a pass of the turn. Ooh. No floats. David is getting two turns now uh, without Quaking Punches. So that's, that's great for him. I hope he takes the opportunity to capitalize. So if you're Cohen here, do you want to be Mega Evolving right now, or do you want to just be overrunning and get some damage on the board? Um... I think you want to be Mega Evolving. Again, my point still stands that I don't think that Kaya will be playing Zero Sick anytime soon, because, or at least not next turn, because he wants to be able to draw cards to find his DCEs and Float Zones. Yeah. But I still think that you shouldn't take the risk, and I think that Mega Evolving, especially when you have a Black Kyrm on the board and uh, three energy in the discard pile, is completely fine and just... Yeah, exactly where you want to be. He is only drawing. He's just drawing six cards here, so we'll see. I certainly think if David has the opportunity, he will slam it. But yeah, also the spirit team is stuck active, so it might as well while he has the option to. Yeah. There's the ultra ball. I really hope that this is getting a mega manectric. Mega manectric. I think that would be. I can't imagine what else he would get. Yeah, there it is. Mega. So David off to a good start. Kyle missing two turns at least of. Quaking Punch and David getting the Mega Manectric had slowed down a little bit by that Spirit Tomb Active and the Crushing Hammer heads on the Lightning in an earlier turn. There's and the there's Float, float stone. stone. Probably there's Ultra Balling for another Slurpuff. Yeah, gotta imagine getting another Slurpuff. So he's gonna get to draw three extra cards this turn. He also just Ultra Balled away a Sycamore. Yeah. So you gotta believe he has a supporter in hand. Well, redundant sycamores aren't very really good, so Ultra Ball Fighter might be what he can get for it. Definitely. I just meant that he has another supporter in his hand, so, like, it's not as if he's without one, or if he wouldn't have discarded the sycamore. Does that yeah. make sense? So he's going to be drawing a bunch of cards. Yeah, there's a sycamore, so he did have another one in his hand. And he still has the tasting in the active position to draw one, and the bench tasting to draw... I mean the active to draw two. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the active tasting. I wonder if there's a DC in there. The other one. Tasting. Muscle band. And there's the DC. If Kyle has a laser, I'm a pretty big fan. I'm still a fan of Quaking Punch, whether or not he has a laser. Oh, I, I don't think you can let David have another turn. There's a head ringer on the black Kyrum. I don't know how much that really affects... I don't think that really matters because... There's going to be a lot of energy on it. There's a yeah. town map. And David's going to... I mean, the way this game's going to play out is David's going to attach this turn to his Manectric and then um, put two on the Black Kyrum, and then he can put two on again and attach. So it's not like it matters too much. Yeah. Cohen probably won't get a second Mega Manectric online anytime soon because of that Toad. So if he can't get a Keldeo out to neutralize the lasers, he could be in a lot of trouble, even though his board looks nice.
because Mega Man actually can get onto a Keldeo, even if you don't have a Float Stone. You can rush in and just use the energy to retreat and put him back. Definitely. We saw we saw Ethan Batson employ that strategy quite a bit. There's the laser knockout on the Spear Tomb, but Kyle already discarding a scoop up Cyclone. He'll have to trump card it back later. There's the lightning. Let's All see right. a Keldeo. All right, David's David's getting somewhere. There There's it is. There's a Keldeo right, right on cue. Wow, Cohen even had a supporter. Yeah, there's the end to give Kyle slightly fewer cards. I mean, obviously, he's going to draw back up to eight, but it's not. It's worth mentioning. Cohen already hit the lightning, too. Mm -hmm. He's getting somewhere. Didn't Cohen attach for turn to the Mega Man? Uh, he he did. Um, I'm gonna go tell them that happened. Yeah. Oh, right All right. Well, that's the Turbo Bolt putting energies onto the Black here. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that play. I think it would be. More important on the Keldeo, especially since Keldeo's Secret Sword could just KO the Seismic Toad outright. But Cohen plays the deck and puts it on the Black Kyrum. I guess he thinks doing 200 to Toad is big, which to be fair is. Like when Toads are playing Cassius and Super Scoop Pups, not being able to one-shot them might be hard. And there's one tasting. We're probably not going to see a Super Scoop Up because he used the tasting already. Which means that if he had a super scoop up, he'd try to play that first. So he could promote the slurp up to the active position and try to draw an extra card. Two tails. But have there's a, a laser, and Cohen doesn't have a float stone or any energy on that Keldeo. So that Manexia's going to start taking a lot of damage real fast here. But it also is going to build up the bike. Yeah, game, I don't think he really cares about that. I mean, I'm imagining a scenario. I don't know what's in David's hand, but I'm imagining a scenario where he... He takes 80 here after the poison. Yeah. Hopefully he can play a Manectric and attach to it. He uh, 110, knock out the Seismitoad, attach to the Black Kyrum. It gets the Megan Metric gets knocked out. Either Manectric or Black Kyrum comes forward, takes another two prizes. Like, you know what I mean? I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a pattern of just, it, as long as Cohen can stabilize, I don't think it matters so much that's getting knocked out. Yeah. If Cohen um, takes two muscle banded quaking punches on that Mega Manectric without getting rid of that poison though he's going to die going into Kyle's turn which is going to let Kyle use another laser on another EX and start getting damage there too. That's true. There's a trump card. Trump card's such a good card. <laughs> he's going to get all those crushing hammers, all those lasers he's going to be able to use them again and he even gets the VS Seekers back so he can do trump card over and over again. And David's gonna deck is gonna be filled with ten more items than it was. Also, it gets again. rid of all the energies in Cohen's discard pile, mm -hmm. so Turbo Volt isn't gonna be able to put those back. Which means that that Black Karen probably isn't going to be attacking anytime soon. Nope, and that's one of the that's one of the downsides here for David. There's all right, there's the eighty damage. Cohen could play a Rough Seas too. Rough Seas is a card in that deck that's very powerful. It does enable the Toads to heal, but it lets Cohen's <laughs> man actually just have so much tankiness. That's fine though, because you're doing more damage. Yeah. Like if Cohen had a Sycamore <laughs> and some energies in his hand, he'd be in really good shape, but I really <laughs> doubt that. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that's the case. He does get to play the second Manectric, which is nice. There's an energy and on he it. He attaches to it. I think at this point the Black Kyrum is just a, a lost cause considering he needs three more energy. Yeah. So Kyle's going to be able to promote a Slurp Puff and draw extra cards with tasting this turn. But if he doesn't hit a double class energy, I think Cohen's probably in really good shape. Oh, wow, I didn't even notice he didn't have a second DCE on board. Yeah, because letting Cohen just go second Mega Manetric with a Spirit Link would be so big. He could retreat the active Mega Manetric for free. Get the poison off it. Start healing it on the bench. By the time the other Manectric starts taking damage, 
Yeah, no, 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 just be fully healed. And I mean, you have to assume that Kyle is going to hit the DC here. I don't see. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure the math works out to where it's likely, considering all the cards Kyle can play. But I mean, if he doesn't, it's going to be huge, and he's not. Yeah. He goes ahead and Juniper or Professor Sycamore there. Hmm. He discarded a Team Flare Grunt. Team Flare Grant would have been pretty good if he had a double class, but not having a double class makes it kind of hard. There's the tasting. He's already used one tasting. That's his last one. Does he have the DZE? Brought a card to the front, and that's a crushing hammer. Ooh. If he hits the lightning, this is actually really good for him, <coughs> but he doesn't. The tails. Ooh, acro bike. Double colors? Uh, I, can't, I can't tell. He was he paused for a bit, so I assume it's not a double colors. He could still easily have it in his hand. There's a muscle band. Do you think Ooh. it's uh, ever wrong to attach these muscle bands before he starts attacking with the toad, considering assault laser? Or um, put he's retreating to the toad, but he might just be leaving it there. I gotta believe he has a DC. There we go. There we go. Um, as far as attaching before you're gonna use them, Matt, I don't think so. I th I think it's probably fine. Okay. Cohen's gonna rough seas. It's interesting because he, you know, Kyle. The way Kyle plays is totally different than the way I play. Like I assumed he didn't have the DC for so long, because I tend to, when I play, I tend to kind of think of things as in parts. And so I definitely would have attached a DC first, and kind of like had that, like been able to compartmentalize. Like that's out of my mind now. Yeah, I can't imagine a scenario where you wouldn't want a quicking punch. Like if you right. have the option to, especially against a board that can't one shot your side of basically no matter what. Right, and conventional wisdom would say, you know, that the old rule was that you shouldn't, you should do the things that you can only do once, or or that are permanent at the very end. Yeah. Once you've made all your decisions, but Cohen again, attaches another water from his hand onto the regular Manexia KX on his bench. So, Team Flare grunting that lightning would have been really big if Kyle just had the double colors before the second one. So, because he attached the second water, would you have rather seen that on the Keldeo or the Black Kieran? You know, I think that the first Turbo Volt should have been onto the Keldeo because then this Manectric would not be taking any poison damage. Right. But Cohen put it onto the Black Kieran and it's not really doing a whole lot. I mean, what's the purpose of the second water, though? Um, he's playing around Headringer, which mm. can make Mega Manectric's attack cost any energy. Cohen might just potentially just want to end his turn Mega Evolving. It's not that bad. That's true. If uh, Kyle can respond to this Turbo Volt with a Cassius or even a Scoop Up Cyclone, which he trump carded back into his deck, he's in really good shape, though. Agreed. There's a Verbank bumping the Rough Seas. So the Mega Man is going to go to 180, and then if it doesn't go to the bench, it's going to attack going into Kyle's turn. And there's another DCE. But David probably plays four rough seas, so he might be able to just bump these rear banks without too much trouble. There's an acro bike. There's the quaking punch. So, Mega Man Electric, 210 HP. There's the rough seas, though. So, Mega Man Electric's gonna be able to survive at least another quaking punch. And and even another quaking punch with a uh, with a verb or with a laser no verb bank. Yeah. If Cohen has a lightning energy here, he can assault laser the side toad for 120 damage, which would be oh, there's a chorus for nine. Uh, eight. Eight. Uh, that's big. If Cohen hits another lightning, he can free retreat the Mega Manectric back to the bench and just assault laser to knock out the side of the toad, which is going to save his Mega Manectric and just have something active ready to Mega Evolve into another one. Absolutely. Alright. Eight cards. This is big. But even if Cohen doesn't hit it, he can kill the side of the toad. And Kyle doesn't necessarily have the resources available. Oh, is that a DC on the bench side of the toad? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. This is bad for Cohen if he doesn't hit a lightning. Oh. Cohen turbo volts for the knockout, so that Mega Man Electrix is not going to last. It will It will last through a... Oh, no, wait, I guess it won't because of the poison razzle. 
So the Mega Man Electric is at 160. So even without Verbank, it's just dead yeah, straight up to the side. I miscalculated punch. by one. So this is rough, but David still only has one, uh, or sorry, two prizes left. Yeah. So, I mean, we some things can happen. Even even if um, David finds uh, promotes the Manectric, finds a lightning, assault laser. I mean, he's tr he's trading uh, favorably with the Seismitoad. Yeah. Assuming no AZ slash Super Skyphone Super Kyle just fails an Ultra Ball. He's, he does have two square legs as prize. He can't set more of those up. He's got a seismitoad prized as well. Yeah. So, going back. When Cohen Turbo bolted onto the Black Kyle lasered and trump carded. And because the energies are on the Black Kyrm, and the Black Kyrm's not doing anything, if he had put those energies on the Keldeo, he would have been able to rush in free retreat and still put the energies on the Black Kyrm. He just wouldn't be poisoned. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably pretty likely that Kyle's drawn another laser since then. But it obviously, the poison damage is just adding up on this Mega Manectric. You know, if he wasn't poisoned and he was healing with rough seas, you know, even if Kyle's replacing the stadium every turn, Cohen would have probably 80 to 100 less damage. Yeah, I was going to say, what even accounting for Rusty, that like he took probably 120. Just from Burbank. Yeah, just from that, and then healed the Rusty's for 60, so between 60 and 100 less damage. And then there's also just all these turns where he's taking 10. Like, that adds up, too. Definitely. So I think it was probably incorrect to attach any to the Black Cam. But Cohen could still just Black Ballista, like... If this Mega Manectric dies and Cohen has another Mega Manectric, he can get the energies on this Mega Manectric onto the other Black Kyrum. And then he just needs one more energy and he can do 200 to a side so which will just win the game for him. He only has two prizes left. Absolutely. I mean, and we could even see a world. Oh, where there's a head ringer on the Manectric, so we're not going to see a Spirit yeah. Link. But Cohen attached the second water just to avoid that, so. I mean, we could even see a world where Cohen, um, Kyle goes knockout here. I have Kyle plays the left. running acrobikes. Uh, he promotes Manectric and then attaches to Black Kyrum. Manectric takes 50, attaches to Black Kyrum. Yeah. Manectric's 50, attaches to Black Kyrum. Like what is Kyle digging for here? I don't understand why he played all these cards. Is he, he going to trump card this turn? I think he's just trying to refill his hand. Alright, well, there's another side of this for Kyle and a crushing hammer. So, even if Cohen has a lightning energy, it's still rough because a head just resets all the work he did. And he can't even attack with Mega Manectric this turn without ending his turn. There's an end. Cohen's going to get two cards. Better hope one of those is a lightning. If he gets lightning, he can assault laser for 120. Which, mm -hmm. two shotting the side of will probably do it, just considering that Kyle already has double colorless energies in his discard, and he only has one seismitoad left in his deck, and he's being end of three. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, a, that's the thing, is I think I think that the trades are fine. Like, that's the weakness of Manectric, is that it it does such little damage, and Cohen's obviously a, a dog to draw lightning. He didn't need to look, he's going to go ahead and pass. Yeah. Or, sorry, overrun. There's an overrun. Uh, Cohen might just want to overrun twice, Lysander the Jirachi and Assault Laser it, like, as a surprise, but there's a Ooh. crushing hammer. That's rough. Wisely going for the active energy. I think going for the Black Cam's energy. I don't even think it's a choice. Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine. So, Kyle having three prices left means that Cohen can't even really go for his Plasma Curum plan, because the Seismitoids are just going to be able to deal with those, so... Fine. Like, Plasma Curum when you need to take seven prizes is rough, but Cohen can't really play the Plasma Curum anymore because he started with that Spirit Tomb. Yeah, to flip, uh, Kyle has to flip a uh, translucent die. We're talking with the judge now. Oh. Just to confirm. That's a one. Yeah, still a, still a miss. Oh, there's a Hypnotoxic Laser. The Manectric going to sleep would be really big considering the silent lab box the Keldeo, but even if it didn't fall asleep, Cohen can't really afford to retreat it and not do anything. 
this energy are too important. Ooh. And now I can't even retreat, so. Uh, that, that might just spell the end. Yeah. Well, Corn does only have two prizes left. Like, yeah, it's not out of it. Also, this Kraken Punch is going to three-shot the Manectric because it's a Silent Lab and not a Verbank. As opposed to two-shotting it, so. Very true. Yeah, Cohen's just going to end his turn and play Mega Man Uh, he didn't take poise. There we go. There's a tasting. So, I think if Cohen gets to Turbo Volt again, this game is over. There's a Verbank, though. But, that's still... He's doing 80, so one. He's doing 50 damage, which puts it up to 120. The rank 30 damage puts it up to 150, and then it does going into Kyle's turn. So whatever Cohen promotes, he can just laser. I mean, I think I think David has to just retreat here. Does David have an energy to pay the retreat cost? He didn't attack an energy last turn. Uh, he can't. Oh, he can rush in though because the silent lab is gone. That's true. So he so might just try player. to stall, but. Keldeo is to retreat. <coughs> yeah, I mean, doing it with Keldeo just puts you in the same spot. There's a Rough Seas, though. Rough Seas is pretty good. It is going to let Kyle heal the Sajmato, but that doesn't seem like it matters too that's much. That's fine. So do you think Cohen's just happy to let this um, extra eat a Quaking Punch and die as long as it doesn't die to poison so that he can just... If, if Cohen is Water Lightning... And Kyle does not hit any crushing hammers. He could just win by Lysandering the Jirachi. But that's asking a lot from an item locked player. I mean I don't I don't think he's happy to, but I don't think he has any other option because if he has an energy he needs to attach it to the Mega Manectric. Yeah. Actually there's a light in his board state. So that's a good start. No, oh, there's uh, the Russian. I really don't like this. Yeah. Well, the clicking punches <coughs> are gonna do fifty, and he can rush these thirty of it off. There's the head ring. That's so big. But Cohen can't even retreat this Keldeo. No, that's what I mean. How, like, how I think he's just content to let it die and stall for time while he builds up that Mega Manectric. I, I, I don't know. I just... If he... He also has the other Keldeo. But there's a Lysander, so the mega, the regular Manectric is not going to last. Well, I, think, I think Kyle just did Cohen a fever there. I mean... <clears throat> Kyle can just build up a board state of crushing, or uh, build up his hand of crushing hammers and things like that to just keep going back. And then, oh, I took I took a prize in your Keldeo, got under one prize left, and you have a damaged Kirim on the bench. Or, I'm sorry, a damaged Manectric on the bench. I think what <coughs> Kyle is trying to do is he's trying to put this game away fast because he knows how dangerous Mega Manectric can be. But Cohen can also just let the Mega Manectric sit there for a little bit. He, I mean, I wouldn't want to leave it active because it could get Team Flare grunted, which would set him back miles, but, you know, I don't really think he has a whole lot of other choices. Like, I think he was sending the Keldy up so that he could buy time, but, but I don't think now that time. the Manectric is gone, just Kyle killing a Keldy just wins the game. Like, he can't do that anymore. Exactly. Well, no, it's fine because Cohen has two energy now. Well, he has a Head Ringer, though, so we can't turbo. Oh, right. Yeah, that's why the Spirit Link is so big. So I don't I don't think Cohen's gonna win this game. I think Kyle would have to make a pretty significant mistake. And I don't even think that would prevent him from winning at this point. I mean the th like it's gonna like four shot the Mega Manectric. It no, the rush is gonna make it even more than that, but you know, if Kyle has laser Verbank or you know, he can trump card into that, then I don't think it's close. Well I'm not sure that I'm not sh I think the trade is actually favorable though, because the Seismitoad will do 50. And then Rough Seas will heal 20 off. And then Turbo Volt will do 110. But 30 of that healing off puts the Seismitoad at 80. So Turbo Volt still t two shots it. But I mean, but you Turbo... But I mean, even if something goes wrong, you Turbo Volt onto the Black Kiram. You have an energy in your hand, you attach it, and Black Ballista something. I can't <laughs> imagine not Turbo Volting onto a Keldeo just so you can retreat. Like, if he puts you to sleep with laser, like, that's your whole game plan gone. You you have to put it on kill the others. No way Cohen thinks that putting it on Black Cam can be a good idea, especially with the head ringer on it. He has to turbo vault onto it and attach for his turn, along with an attachment for turn onto his active Mega Manectric. 
Like, it just doesn't seem realistic. And he only has two prizes left, so he might just be hoping that Kyle just can't, like, get rid of that toad. Well, there's an N. Um, that seems fine. Kyle's going to one card, but he does have those slip puffs, so it's not that big of a deal for him. Cohen had two cards from an N, and now he's going to get two different cards from a different N, but... I don't really think it matters. I don't know what Kyle's trying to dig for, like, by putting himself to one card, though. That just seems kind of strange. Yeah, I don't think he actually is needs to look for anything. Alright. There's a Quaking Punch doing damage. There's the Rusty's heal. Does Cohen have an energy? Ooh, he's got an N. Cohen gets two cards. Maybe he'll see it. If he doesn't see it, he's still not dead, but it gets a lot worse the longer it takes. Another thing about turbo bolting onto the Keldeo is that um, Secret Sword can do 70 damage to Jirachi EX, no problem. So if he's planning to Lysand or something, then he might as well. Cohen misses an energy. No, no, that's just Rusty's. Does he have an energy? Nope. There's Tasting. So if Cohen goes on a two-shot Seismic Toad plan, Cassius is a card. The Scoop Up Cyclone is a card. Uh, super scoop ups even are cards. So I don't know if Cohen thinks that he's relying on Black Kirin so that he can one shot a Toad. But he can also just one shot the Jirachi, which I think is his best shot. Cohen could just go Energy, Lysander, Jirachi, that's, that's it. Because Turbo Volt would do enough. Absolutely. But I'm just not, uh, I'm trying to figure out. There's a Verbank. Oh, that's, that's pretty rough. rough. I'm trying to figure out how Cohen can maneuver this into a favorable trade, given that Kyle has two Seismitoads. I think without <coughs> double colorless energy, he almost can't. I can't see what Kyle discarded, but. He probably has a uh, Team Flare Grant in his discard pile by now, and I almost would have rather just seen him VS Seeker for the Team Flare Grant. Like, he's going to win this game if the board stays the way it is, and he has the tasting, so he doesn't really need the Sicko more. And getting rid of that Lightning almost makes it impossible for Cohen at this point. That's a reasonable assertion. I also, I think we've seen Kyle uh, favor drawing cards yeah. basically in every spot, and that might come from his inexperience. He has taken a six-year hiatus from the game. Yeah. Stopped playing in the SP area to finish high school. This is his first tournament back. So he, 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 I would be willing to bet that he is not as experienced in the format. It's also very hard to call drawing seven cards wrong. Like, it's yeah. obviously a very powerful effect. That's the truth. So, Cohen is 120 on this Mega Manectric. It's going to take 30 from Poison, go to 150... The Quaking Punch is going to kill it. So he cannot use Turbo Volt, even if, like, he's able to attack, because the Quaking Punch will just kill it. And he's not going to kill the Sidon Sword with it. So Cohen has to retreat here. I don't know if I would do Black Kirim and just hope I'd get two manual attachments, but it seems like that's Cohen's best shot, and I he's mean, going for it. Yeah, I don't see, because, like... You can't do a Keldeo because Keldeo, you can't retreat it. You're also hoping for two manual attachments to retreat. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then Karen. you still need a third manual attachment to attack with That's Turbo Volt. Exactly. Like you, you can have Black Karen when you're hoping for two manual attachments to win the game. <coughs> for sure. I think um, a laser from Kyle just puts the game away right now, though. Uh, so it'll go 50, 80, and then Cohen attaches 110, and then it, yeah, it'll be knockout. It at least forces Cohen to rush in, and if he's rushing in, like the game's over. Yeah. Because what what what's he gonna do after then? Like he doesn't he just won't have the time. Yeah. I think Kyle might be going for a trump card here. Nope, Lysander. Oh, he might just win the game here. He Lysander's the Mega Man actually. Does he have a? He can't win the game here, right? No, that's only two hundred if he has a laser. Yeah. Uh, I don't agree with that play. Mega Mega Man has free retreat, right? Yeah. Maybe he'll put it to sleep and then force oh. Cohen to rush in anyway. Wow. Oh, not even a lazy. Wow. wow. Maybe he's going for a kill it with another he Lysander might, yeah, plan. Yeah, he might have the second Lysander. In which case, it's totally reasonable. Well, the car is from Cohen is his last shot. He can't even get rid of the Lysander if it's in hand anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if Kyle is on the double Lysander planets, it's game over. If Cohen had an N, like, maybe, but... There's no Cohen way. could also hit a rough seas here, and rough seas would go bring the Mega Manetric back down to 140 damage on it. But it would still die to a laser. It would still die to a laser, but Kyle didn't play a laser last turn, which sure, makes sure. me think he doesn't have one. I mean, I guess, like, knowing Cohen is forced to rush in anyway, but... There's the retreat. And if Cohen goes down to 140... Looks like he with has the a rough seas. Oh, this is VS secure for Yeah, that's the game one. Yeah. So Kyle Andrews takes game one off of 2011 world champion David Cohen. Um, if that was where it felt like a back and forth game, but I'm not actually sure that Cohen was ever really in a position to win. He was in a position to not lose a lot, and he was in a position to where if he draws mono perfects and if Kyle stumbles, he wins. But even even in those situations, he still has turns away from winning every time. Mostly thanks to those head ringers. Yeah, those head ringers are brutal. That's why the spirit link matters so much. You get that uh, spirit link on the board turn one. Like it's not even a guarantee, but it's a very very likely outcome that you're gonna get a mega electric and you're gonna get to turbo bolt. Absolutely. As always, on the bubble is brought to you by Top Cut Central. Check out TopCutCentral.com for all your sealed products, singles. And accessories, if you like the streams, the best way to support us is to support Top Cut Central. You can use the coupon code BUBBLE until the end of the season to get 10% off your order. Uh, they have competitive race, they have a buy list as well if you want to sell some cards and get some new uh, trade, in, trade in your cards for some Roaring Skies packs or some Shaman EXs. So you want to check that out at topcutcentral.com. So David going first here is an advantage. She also went first last game, but hopefully he can land another Manectric Spirit Link. Didn't Kyle go first last game? No, I think I think Cohen did. He started Swirlix and Jirachi for a second one, right? Cohen Mulligans. So I'm giving I'm Kyle sure. an extra card. So what deck did you end up playing today, Liam? I played Executor. How'd that go for you? I went 5-2-1 um, and one in Swiss, and I uh, got 17th place. 17th. By a 0.04% bonus match win percent. That's brutal. Happens. What Somebody has to get 17th. What would you say is worse, getting 17th or missing the kicker at Cities? Missing the kicker at Cities. Not close. <laughs> yeah, these Oregon events aren't very good to me. I got a 35th at Oregon Regionals, just bubbling the top 32 points. How was the cut? Who, who was was it all was six one one the minimum? Uh, I believe one? there were two six twos. Okay, but not so very many. Because I know you'll get the situations a lot where it'll have like you you have let's say seven rounds, but it's almost eight, and you get to a point where like six one ones will miss. Yeah, but six twos getting I mean a similar amount of six twos getting in is fair. I think as all as long as all of the X ones one get in X one ones get in. Yeah. All right, Cohen starts Keldio. Um, that could be good or bad, depending on what's in his hand. But if he has a full stone for it, that's pretty good. Kyle takes his mulligan draws. Ooh, that's a seismitoad. This could be ugly fast. There's, There's the a float stone. stone. That's Perfect. pretty big. That's gonna. Kyle only plays one silent lab, so he's attaching to the Kelly Which makes you think he doesn't really have anything uh, else in his hand, though. That might be bad. Wow, a pass of the turn here from David would be absolutely horrifying. But I can't imagine. Why else he would attach and oh David says a pass the turn. Well float zone was the only good thing in his hand. No supporter, DCE, and this could be a quick game. Wow. The double colors already, yeah. Oh muscle, muscle band too. Muscle band. Let's let's just, just on a laser ring, just, just rub it in. Just naturally. There's an acro bike. Looks like there's a crushing hammer as part of that acro bike. I wouldn't even fire it off. Just wait. Let's let's try. I would wait for I'm um, gonna to hit the board. There's a team flare grant hitting the discard. There's an ultra ball in his hand. He has lots more options. And let's get ugly fast. Cohen, Cohen needs to draw a supporter. All right. If he ultra balls for a Jirachi for Sycamore, instead of Zoro seeking that float stone, this is the perfect opportunity to Zoro seek, and he's gonna quaking punch, and there's never gonna be another float stone. Yeah. That's 
But if he doesn't have a laser, it doesn't really matter that much. Retreating the Keldeo isn't super relevant if it's only taking 50 instead of 50 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30. Well, I think at, at this point, uh, David's, I mean, David's just on the find anything I can plan. Yeah. Oh, there's a Jirachi. Uh, he's shuffling his deck uh, before he gets a supporter. Sportsmanship. Dave, I don't think David will call him on it. I mean, it's not like like it's correct to shuffle your deck. Like you're ultra running for the Jirachi, and the Jirachi goes into your hand. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. you play the Jirachi on the bench. Use Stellar Guide and search your deck and shuffle your deck. Like, he's not doing anything wrong. It's just. Yep, this is Rosic. All right, he just had two of them. That's great. I'm glad. I'm kind of confused about ultra running for the Jirachi there, but I guess it's fine. Cohen could play an end though and get rid of Kyle's Jirachi. I mean, Cohen has to draw exactly end, though. Like, you know that he yeah. doesn't have anything. So, if Cohen plays a rough seas, he's going to be able to do 110 with Secret Sword yeah. if he has three water on it. It's the third water. And Shipping the turn back. But Kyle's going to be able to play that Jirachi now, and I don't think he's going to get another out because once Kyle gets a second toad out, there's a head ring or two. That's so big. Cohen's not going to be able to get a hit for 110 anymore. There's an Ultra Ball almost discarding two VS Seeker. Oh, no, it actually, wow. choosing to discard two VS Seeker. Wow, this is just. It's going to be a beating. <laughs> oh, there's a Swirlix. I'd almost rather see another Siren Toad, but if he's going to take him away, I guess getting the Swirlix out is fine. I mean, I think the thing is, is that you just kind of want to set up for the rest of the game. Yeah. Like you assume, like, you're, you're so head on board. Cohen's almost dead. You assume worst case scenario, and I think in, in a worst case scenario, you're going to want the uh, Slurp Puff to be able to draw more cards. Well, I'm thinking in a worst case scenario, I'm going to want to be able to scoop up my Seismic Toad and promote a Seismic Toad, because now he's relying on hitting a Fault Stone or another Seismic Toad. Like, it's not that unlikely to hit another Seismic Toad, but I think it would have been correct to get a Seismic Toad there. But Kyle's on top eight, and I'm not, so maybe he knows something I don't. No, I mean, certainly you can't, you can't be results-oriented, Liam. I just think there's a... There is a oh, there's a float stone, so he got it. It's going to go to 100, David's draw step. Uh, Look here, I'm keeping him in the game. That's not bad. If Cohen has energy for that, that, that could do stuff. Uh, that's a lightning. It's... Gets there one way. The uh, the thirty thirty is oh, there's a Jirachi. If Kyle only plays the four double cost, he does not have any basic energy in his deck, and he already played the float stone, so he's looking for another float stone. I don't think he wants to discard a DC, but he does have trump card, so it's not that big of a deal if he does. I mean, I think you discard. I think you. There's snap another size method. I think you snap retreat if you have the. You have the ability to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there it is. Like, why would you not? You you have such an advantage. You may as well press it. You know. Sure. The DC is fine. There's a sycamore just cutting a head ringer and another sycamore. Imagine if head ringer could go on Nani Axis. Well, it wouldn't be ten dollars, it would be a lot more. Oh. There's an acrobike. So, no Slurpuff yet. Oh, there's a Lazy though, which means that this Quaking Punch is going to be a knockout if Kyle has a Verbank. Otherwise, it's going to die going into Kyle's turn, which is honestly probably better. As long as Cohen doesn't have a rough seize. Cohen needs to flip for sleep. Yeah. Uh, probably doesn't matter. I guess it doesn't matter too much. There's another Lightning. There we go. All right, Cohen passes, Kelly dies. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't imagine anyways. Well, he could have attached and retreated, but I don't think he would have wanted to. True, true. Right, Kyle's got a lot of cards in his hand, and he put a head ringer on the Manic Chick. The head ringer 
you know, even under Quaking Punch Lock, when Cohen just can't attach his Spirit Links, the Ringer still matters a lot. Three energy and two energy is just a world of difference against a deck with crushing hammers and team flare grants. Absolutely. Alright, there's the trump card. Kyle is just tightening his grip on this game. Mm -hmm. It's it's really just a matter of time now. I don't really think Cohen has a way in this one. I think that Headringer really locked it up. I mean, obviously, David does have some percentage of winning the game, but it would require Kyle failing. Yeah. Kareem also has three retreat. Like, that's going to be stuck there, and Cohen can't exactly search his deck for Keldeo under Quaking Punch. It is still a three shot, though. Like, he does have time to draw energies and mega evolve oh, without repercussion. Back. Wow, that's not good. This has nothing going on. Alright, well, there's a Slurp Puff. Discarding a Silent Lab. I guess that's not bad. Silent Lab does prevent Keldeo from rushing in, but I wouldn't expect to see a Keldeo rushing in here. Silent Lab's main utility might just be getting rid of Rough Seas, but. There's a Fault Stone on the Jirachi, so... Do you think that uh, that would have been better on the Swirlix, or...? Um, I imagine so. He just might want to be fighting against uh, potential Lysanders from David, sure. at which point he would rather have a Swirlix trapped active than a Jirachi, but... All right, Cohen basically just dropped passing with another yeah. Manectric. Plays a Manectric and ships the turn Kyle back. plays a second Slurp. <coughs> Ooh. That's, that's, huge. that's wow. the end. <sighs> Two uh, tastings, rough. another acro bike. What a beautiful deck. I love this deck. I actually think that it's such another no, head ringer, ringer. Just casually. Yeah. It's just the rub ins. I actually love this deck. I think that it's just a type of deck I like to play. Just draw, draw a card, draw a card, draw a card. Lysander's trump card. I got all my stuff back. It's just so dirtily and great. Yeah, Executor is a lot like that, too. Absolutely. Executor is great. <laughs> okay. So, Cohen can't do something here, and he just dropped passes. Kyle's going to wrap this up pretty quick with a Hypnotoxic Laser. Uh, if he can have a Verbank especially, that's just two turns. and I guess it's not over in the sense that Kyle still has a prize, but... I don't see oh, a I way mean, for David to come back. What percentage would you put David at winning the game here? Like 1%? I'd say very close to zero. Like um, considering that Kyle has two s more size and on the bench. Well, there are no DCs no in DCs, play. No DCs. No DCs. Um, I think if Cohen plays Zerosic, he might be 2 or 3%. But I don't see him winning this if he doesn't have a way to get rid of a DC without Absolutely. items. I can't imagine. All right. There's the ref sees, but... That's just going to buy him time. It's not going to win the game do. for him. And... All right. Yeah, I don't... The head, the head ringer hit missed uh, connecting with the crushing hammer, I think, is just too much. Yeah. Like, David is now on a multiple turn plan. All to right. Well, he mega evolves, but it doesn't really do much. I think that's just going to buy him time. I mean, it does have turn... Oh, there's <coughs> a second double colorless. And Kyle still has his scoop up Cyclone. There's a Sycamore discarding a Crushing Hammer. I think he discarded a town map. I guess it's okay to not fire it off. But I mean, you might as well. I don't, I don't see. There's a Verbank. If Kyle has a laser, that's really good. Yeah, there's a laser. So, Kyle's gonna do 50. The Poison's gonna put the Mega Manectric up to 100. It's going to go to 130 going into Kyle's turn. And then Kyle hitting it for 50 with 30 more from Poison is going to knock out this Manectric on his next attack. Unless Cohen can play a rough C to get rid of that Poison. Which, considering Mega Manectric is free retreat, shouldn't be very difficult. There's a tasting. Other tasting. Up to 100. David draws. There's a lightning. 
He can't even overrun. Waiting for you. It's disgusting. Cohen discards an end, so he recognizes the need for yeah. more cards. How brutal. There's a rough season. That's really good for Cohen. He's going to heal. I think he might want to just leave the Manic on the bench and potentially just build it up and leave this one up to just die. I agree. If Cohen can go Kelio and like start healing and then play another Kelio, heal the other Kelio all the way, rush in again, heal that Kelio. <laughs> I mean, ev even simpler than that. I mean, David David's at 7, or the active Mega is at 70. It goes to, oh, I, I don't like this. I was going to say, you can basically let, you could basically attach next turn to the bench Manectric, the one that was on the bench. Yeah. Mega evolve, take some damage, retreat, and then you have a, and attach again, of course, and you have a Mega Manectric attacker. Like, you, obviously that's not very good, but you won't, you'll, you'll live through it. Yeah. I think Cohen might have a shot if Kyle Zerosix his own DCE and passes. But it looks like he's gonna trump card and not give Cohen that out. <sighs> what a rough spot, I mean I don't I don't see how David is able to Well the rough seas is gonna just make that I mean, actually pretty beefy. Like it'll take a while to kill it. If Kyle can't play laser, but still. Yeah, but it's six prizes to three, to three even. All right. Well, Cohen attaches rough seas. He can overrun for twenty, and then, or if he gets a mega electric, like mega electric would be pretty good here. Just mega evolving the active, and then he'd be able to potentially. No, he doesn't have any energy in his discard because Kyle just trump carded, but. If Kyle, if uh, Cohen gets like a Sycamore, then he could discard energies, put him on the other Mega Manectric, and between Rough Seas and Free Retreat, like he might just be able to loop between the two. If Cohen can get that set up, I think he's actually like reasonably favored, but that just seems like it's so much, and Kyle could just play a Verbank and ruin the whole plan. Yeah, I feel. I mean, I feel like all of these plans we've been talking about, David actually doesn't even overrun. Yeah. Must be an oversight. Well. I mean, li like I said, between games, I feel like all these plans we're talking about are if A, B, and C, and D happen in that order, David is now a 5% to 15% chance to win the game. Yeah. And if any one of A, B, C, or D happens in any order, uh, Kyle can just negate that entire thing. You know, I feel like it's just been David just walking around the tightrope where everything has to go exactly right, and even then he's less than a coin flip to win. Yeah, I think if Cohen Mega evolved that turn... I would put him at 10% if he has like a Sycamore in hand and he's able to do things. There's sure, another Manectric. Sure. Uh, there's a Chorus that's going to draw a Cohen 7 cards. So, you know, Mega Evolving the Active with this much damage on it already. He does get to Rough Seas. And that's he's going to have the other Mega Manectric fresh if he can Mega Evolve this one. It's, it's certainly not going to be easy, but I don't think it's impossible for Cohen. No, I mean, he's... He still has a lot of chance, you know, and that's the thing is that I talk about a lot during the streams is that you have to you have to keep playing. You have yeah. to play to your outs. I, when Three I is a lot of prizes. That's two 200 HP EX knockouts. Yeah, like you, you just have to keep doing it. What, what else are you going to do? I mean, when I, when I first started playing Pokemon, I lost a lot of matches. I'd probably say my win percentage decreased by almost 10% just because yeah. I concede way too early. Or if I, if I wasn't actually conceding, I would... You know, uh, virtually give up on the game yeah. and not really focus. And Cohen uh, assault yeah. lasers for 120, but there's the scoop up cyclone. Yep. And Oops. Oh, yes. ooh, that's that's correct. You gotta get the maximum card advantage. And there's the tastings for two. This is also we talked earlier um, when I when Serena was on with me about how I don't necessarily think size and touch is overpowered. I think it's very frustrating. Yeah. In that I think that. You know, it's it's not it's it, it is the variants are probably the best deck, but they're not unbeatable. They don't win every tournament. They're not every slot of the top eight. But what they are is very annoying to play against. You know, you have you have Seismitoad, you have Crushing Hammer, Super Scoop Up, Scoop Up Cyclones, Lasers, and Verbangs. Like all these just incredibly infuriating cards that don't let you play the cards that you're are in your deck. Ooh, Crushing and Hammer. Another part of this is the what's happening now, which is okay, Scoop Up Cyclone. Like I'm going to beat you, but I can't. 
Yeah. I'm going to beat you 99%, but it'll take me 15 minutes. So I'm going to do things like scoop up Cyclone, yeah. send up my uh, Slurp Puff, just draw two more cards. All right. Th- and it's not that Carol's doing anything wrong. He's definitely not. It's the power of the card, but it is. it does lead to frustrating experiences. I'm a little confused about why Kyle feels like he needs to sycamore, like, repeatedly, when he could just be flare gunching. I feel like flare gun would close this game a lot more efficiently. You know, Kyle drawing cards is great, but if he's just drawing cards for the sake of drawing cards, it doesn't really accomplish much. And, you know, getting tails on these crushing hammers, he could just be flare gunching for guaranteed... You know, discard the lightning, and you won't be able to assault laser next turn. All right, he ends Cohen to six. Um, I don't know about giving Cohen cards, but you know, there's nothing he's really digging for either. All right, there's a laser. Without a very rank in play, that doesn't do a whole lot, but it matters, I guess. And stacking up the damage. Cohen's attaching to the Magaman, actually. You know, Mega Volving the active would remove the poison. I mean, I fully believe Cohen would go for that play if he had the opportunity. Yeah. Well, he does just end to a fresh hand of six, so maybe he has it. Are all the other matches finished? Um, I can't see from here, but... It looks like there's one match left going. One match. <coughs> Besides this one. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And there's a sycamore. <coughs> I think Silent Lab is relevant in the sense that it um, removes the refsies, but it doesn't really do a whole yeah, lot to Cohen's deck. You know, Black Cream doesn't have an ability, Manekic doesn't have an ability. I guess it stops Keldia, but David doesn't have any of those in play anyway. There's a Crushing Hammer and a Lightning. Cohen's active Mega Manekic too. So, you know, that lightning would have been very big. It would have allowed him to turbo bolt onto the other Mega Manetric. Absolutely. There's a rough There's seas. There's a rough seas coming back. So, Cohen doesn't die to a laser from Quaking Punch. And so he's going to be able to retreat, which is pretty big. <coughs> so, based on who's still around the tournament, I would guess that. Uh, Tony Paul has defeated Stefan Tobacco. Queens is a Verzine in the top four. I don't actually know. <coughs> he doesn't look too happy. Sitting by himself on his phone. But just why would he still be here? That's what right. I'm wondering. That's true. Stefan's still here too, though. Oh, really? Yeah. I can't see him from my vantage point. Right, we got some other matches going. And that size, my toad moves to 110 damage. And the turbo bolt onto the other magnetic. So Cohen's gonna be able to free retreat into that, attach, and turbo bolt again. Oh, town map fired it off. Finally. Nice. Let's see what he's hiding. Team Flare Grunt, Burbank, City Gym, and a Professor Sycamore. Prizing that Burbank actually seems like a pretty big deal. You know, if he's playing with one Burbank and one Silent Lab against Cohen's four rough seas, he's gonna have a hard time. But uh, I don't really think Cohen can give up any more prizes without just outright losing the game at this point. There's a VS Seeker for Cassius. Healing the Toad up. You know, Mega Electric is a very powerful card, but it can't one shot a seismic toad. So, shuffling that toad back, keeping Cohen at six prizes. 
It just seems really tough. Kyle's never even going to deck out just because of trump card. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's not, not a thing that's going to happen. Why not promote the uh, Slurp Puff with the Float Stone there? Did he already use Tasting? Did he have the Tasting uh, to find the Cassius? I am not sure. Oh, okay. Well, the other magic has the energies. Three energies. And Rough Seas. 110. Put the energies. There are no energies. No, no energy. Well, if uh, Kyle Crushing Hammers off either Midnight Trick, Cohen can just use the other one. There's some tastings. There's a double <laughs> colorless. Almost on the uh, slurp off. It is 10.30 p.m. Kyle Paul, uh, Tony Paul did win. Nice. Ooh, there's a Lysander, but it's not going to be able to... Oh, it has 120 on it, so yeah. Laser would get it. Kyle, remembering the rough seas. How would Laser get it? Uh, it has 120, 170, 200. Oh, yeah, it doesn't do it. There's no it there's also no Vermin. There's also no Vermin, yeah. yeah. But even if there were, even if there were, if yeah. there were two Verbanks in play, it would do it. All right. So Cohen's going to get finally a knockout. And there's the first knockout of the game, probably 30 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first knockout of side. I think Cohen's actually probably 30 or 40% to win from here. Like, it's not fantastic, but he's definitely in this game. Especially if just Kyle can't get any more knockouts. Uh, Cohen might be able to eventually... Oh, there's a laser head. If he can't retreat that mana streak, that's pretty big. Especially since the rough season's gone. It's a Verbank now. There's the tasting for two. Benching the Sage with Toad. Sycamore. Wouldn't it be funny if Kyle just had seven cards left in his deck? <coughs> That'd be pretty rough. I've definitely done that on PTCGO before. Yeah. PTCGO even has a little number that tells you how many cards left in your deck. Yeah, I just feel like there's... It's like when I can tactile like to see how many cards. Yeah. It's much easier for for me. I've also definitely uh play Garbador, attach a tool, go to seller guidance. Oh It's even worse with <laughs> Silent Lab. It's a real gotcha moment yeah. when they bench the Jirachi and it's in play, but they don't get the supporter. Very true, very true. Alright, Cohen doesn't wake up. And he doesn't have a rough seas. But maybe he just says kill the ODC. He's been hiding the normal colors from us the whole time. <laughs> I don't think so, somehow, but it's possible. There's <coughs> an <coughs> attachment. Cohen. Oh, Me uh, Mega Evolving a fine use of his turn. He's going to be able to use the other Mega Manetric onto that one. It's just the other Mega Manetric already has so much damage on it that it's just probably not going to make it. You see on side of the and this has just been a battle. <laughs> this game's been going on for so right. long. So after poison, this Mega Manic is going to go to 190. The other Mega Manic has 140 on it. So he can retreat the Mega Manic with 190 to the one with 140 and force Kyle to have a Hypnotoxic Laser to knock it out. If Cohen is a rough seize, um, 140 goes to 110. And even with a Hypnotoxic Laser, he's only doing 50. 10 from poison. That's only putting it up to 170. Cohen rushes it back down to 140 and can retreat. Um, that is dependent on him finding a rough seas, but. Yeah, Cohen does play four, so. Kyle only has the one Burbank and the one Silent Lab, and he's relying on trump card looping those. There's a flare grunt, but the turbo bolt's just gonna get that back. I don't know if I. I don't know if that really accomplished anything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, David 
wants the other one to be active if anything. Yeah. You know, I don't think. He doesn't want to poison Mega Man actually in the active position. Especially one with any damage on it. So, Coin is at zero damage Mega Man actually on this bench. And even with the Headringer and only one basic energy in his discard, I think he wants to put it there. Because Kyle having three prizes left can KO one, but not both. And relying on a 190 Why damage. Why do you think it's active like that? What do you mean? Like off to the side? His active is like a w half quarter of an inch in front of his bench and not even in the middle. Why do you do that? Because he's David Cohen. Mm, he's a world so. champion. And this will, uh, this active making metric, thank you, will get knocked out to a laser. Quaking punch. Oh, it only has 140, so he needs a laser. Yeah. But if he doesn't have a laser, that's really good. So if Kyle has a Cassius, that's really good for him. Um, maybe a super scoop up. Even just a trump card and like trying to hit the scoop up cyclone again would be really good. Absolutely. Nor Cowboys heading out. This has just been. Uh, I, uh, David's been playing pretty well. I don't. I mean, the first game was a little rough. Yeah. I think um, if Cohen can actually get it to a game three, like sudden death situation where time is called, he's like reasonable. If Kyle doesn't just go toe DC laser ribbing turn one. So how, how how will that work? I don't actually know the intricacies of this. So if let's say David wins while they're shuffling, time is called. Is it sudden death? Yes. Okay. What if David wins and time is called while they're just playing? the next game three. Then they do plus three and price count. And it, it, it does go to price count? Yes. Okay. Game so two doesn't count unless one player's taken more than four prizes. So if time is called in this game and nobody takes any more prizes until the end of the game, Kyle's just going to win the match because he won game one. Not because he's three prizes to David's four. I think wouldn't uh, Kyle... Oh, right. Okay. I see what you're saying. Sorry. So there's a VSC here. I'd like to see a trump card here. I can't imagine a whole lot else. I agree that David... Uh, Maybe a Cassius, but... I agree that David is favored if they, if it goes to game three with a short amount of time. Like in, in, like you said, unless the size Matoad aggro happens, I think that David is, can take faster prizes. Yeah, just thinking about game one, you know, Cohen took four prizes pretty fast, but he wasn't able to get there. But, you know, if you have to cut the game off short, then they'll just see that he's taking four prizes. Absolutely. Alright, there's a Lysander, so he's going to be able to get the Mega Manarchy with 190 on it. Oh, yeah. Nope, Flagrant. Okay. So, he's going to get a Lightning off this Mega Manarchy. Flagrant's a powerful. I played two of them in my Executor deck today, and against Toad, they just can't oh, do anything about it. I, I love Flagrant. It's my favorite cards. <coughs> All right, so there's 190 on this Mega Man right now. If Cohen doesn't have another energy, he oh might be in trouble. Energy? Any energy? Any energy? All right, well, that's a lie, Sandy. So, that's so a he's going to take a prize on that. But he could also just KO this active session, so I don't know why he didn't do that. It has 110 damage on it. Is he retreating? Wait, he can't currently knock out anything. Oh, none of them have three energy. Yeah, yeah head ringers. So he's just going to go ahead and retreat, hope to stall. There are uh, two float zones on board. Yeah, so and maybe maybe Kyle's out of VS Seekers. Just like didn't trump card. There's an acro bike. I think there's a VS Seeker. I don't know if you'd do that if there wasn't a VS Seeker. Maybe. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, there's a VS Seeker. I didn't. Man. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> How would you feel about <laughs> acro biking, assuming there's a VS Seeker missing and just losing because of it? Well, we actually saw Kyle in round eight versus Tyler Nomura uh, be too cautious with his acro with his uh, tastings. He has four cards left in his deck. He can tastings for two of them, try and hit a versus Seeker. He doesn't. I assume that means there's no versus Seeker left. Next turn, he draws, tasting, finds the versus Seeker. Huh. So, if anything, he's definitely risk averse to decking. So. Interesting. <coughs> 
he admitted like he he admitted that he should have. He was just being too cautious. It's not like he sure. doesn't actually understand, but. There's a crushing hammer. Heads off the fresh one. That's big. Oh, man. It's the other thing to, pay to consider is that, you know, Kyle Andrews hasn't played a tournament in six years. If this if he wins ends up winning this match plays his semifinals at 11 15 p.m like he could that could a fatigue could honestly be an issue That's i mean true. david david cohen hasn't been playing to the full extent in a couple of year, in the last few seasons but he's definitely been used to the old school regionals where they ended at 2 a.m yeah. denny's finals is denny's exactly so and even if even if this game goes for another 10 minutes and then they go into a game three I, I, kyle's play could slip up just from being you know he's he's probably been Registration started at 8 a.m. today, so if he's been up since 7, <coughs> it's been 14 hours, going on 15. Wow, yeah. Of being awake at the venue, so. He also told me, when I played him in Swiss, that he borrowed his deck for this event. Yeah, this is his first tournament in six years, so I imagine that he just, uh, you know, has some friends that still play, kind of got back into it, and is borrowing the deck. He also had like a enough of a binder to trade me for a Seismic 30X before top eight, because he wrote that he had four regular at once and he had three and a full art and he needed a regular one or he couldn't play top eight. He couldn't play top eight. Or he couldn't use his full art one in top eight. Right. <laughs> it would have had to be a basic energy. That's, and a, uh, that's a very silly rule. Having one <coughs> basic energy in a Seismic Toad deck doesn't go very far. I guess you'd probably want a fairy energy so you use Slurp plus attack, but. Yeah. Black Army X isn't even weak to fairy. All the new Dragon EXs are. I know. Black Army just got lucky. Oh, Kelly of Floatstone. Kelly of Floatstone Battle Compressor. Here we go. A turn without Quaking Punch. What can David do? Yeah, you know, just even giving up the lock for one turn. But, you know, if Cohen doesn't have a Lysander, like, killing the Slurp Puff doesn't really accomplish much either. If he has Lysander for Seismic Toad, kill it with Turbo Fault, put it under the Mega Man actually with zero damage, he's so far ahead. But uh, getting that Juniper means that he probably is going to VS Seeker for it. I imagine so. I, I don't know what's in his hand, but I can't I can't imagine why he would dump just a relevant card. Yeah. <laughs> Enough, he's not going to... I mean, he's like, cause he, he can't expect to have more turns of Versus Seeker after this. Yeah. Do you think that uh, Cohen should... Juniper or kill the Seismic Toad? Uh, I'm not going to the Seismic Toad. Maybe he has two VS Seekers in hand and he's going to VS Seeker for Lysander and, and then just VS Seeker for the Juniper. Hold it. It's possible. So Cohen going down to two prizes would mean that um, if time is called during this game, well, Kyle is going to knock out this Mega Manectric, so I guess it doesn't matter. But um, getting the damage onto this Mega Man actually. So if Cohen only had two prizes, oh, he only has three because he killed the Slurpuff and not the. Yeah, I don't. I don't. What I do don't you think about benching the Black Kyrum? I guess it one shots the Siding Toad, and it has all a three Headringers are in play. So yeah, he has a Float Stone on it. It's fine. I mean, the reason's not to, I guess. In case there's a zero sick next turn Lysander type of play or something. Ooh, Silent Lab. Cohen can't rush in anymore. But at the same time, like, why would he rush in? He's got a clean Mega Man extra can play. Like, this one's going to get knocked out this turn. There's a Sycamore. Just crying. Sycamore, VS Seeker, Swirlix. Do you think Kyle should have just benched that Swirlix there? Uh. Because having two of them in play doesn't really matter. Cause How much HP does the Swirlix have? It is 60 HP. I, I g it doesn't matter, I guess, with uh, with another... Well, since there's already Cohen has three prizes, so he'd still need to kill an EX, like, no matter how many Swirlixes he killed, as long as there were two in As long as there were only two in play. Right. Oh, scoop of Cyclone. So now Cohen doesn't even have the Lysander option available to him. 
There's a muscle band on the other side, so that's pretty good. But that's, I mean, an, a way Cohen can win this game is just, uh, he gets knocked out here, promotes the fresh mini, uh, mega. One to, well, well, I guess well. Ooh, that's a head. All right, that, that, does, that doesn't stop Cohen can still have an energy. Yeah. Like, he's taking word for a whole hand. And he attached last Well, he, he has, he, uh. And just cutting the energies isn't that bad if Cohen has a third, because he can just turbo bolt them back onto his board. Yeah, I mean, he can win this game by, he can like that here, promote the, All right. well, promote the flip. Kyle takes the uh, flare <laughs> grunt, which is pretty good against Mega Man. Actually. Ooh, rough seas. Rough seas. So if Cohen can just get this Mega Man Electric to the point where it won't die in one hit, and he can just switch off on Mega Man Electrics, he's like reasonable. No, he just passes the turn. Lysander, uh, Lysander. Cohen concedes. Well, <laughs> looks like Kyle Andrews is going to the semifinals. Yep, after uh, after a long time, David back and forth. Finally, that Lysander hits that Mega Man Electric. Uh, I hope Kyle, Kyle remembers Andrews. to get his uh, head ringers back. Uh, did, did he not? I guess I'm not sure. David's it looks like David's looking through his deck yeah. for him. Okay. Wow. So that was a, a long, a long match. Yeah, I agree. Um, Kyle is advancing to the semifinals. Not sure who he's playing yet, but I'll go ahead and figure all that out. That was surprisingly close for a 2 0 2. I felt like David was in both of those games, at least for quite a lot of them. I felt like he wasn't in the first one all that much, but the second one definitely. I think he was in the first one until he put the energies on the black hair instead of the Keldeo. That was like turn two. <laughs> yeah. He was in really good shape if he put the energy on the Keldeo. That's true. Alright, thank you for watching. We'll be right back.